All right. So sorry, I got interrupted in the last video. Uh, had some internet glitches, technical problems. I hope I've got that sorted now and you can see my screen. So as I was saying, in ICICI Bank, we went long at somewhere around 592 levels. I, I kept on telling you, markets are choppy, not going to give you immediate profit. Trust in the process. Eventually, we, we got a good support and it bounced back 5 rupees. Tons of money was made there. We took a long even in Axis Bank. That was another trade that I, I sent out in our forums, uh, even on Telegram. That was, I think, much more uh, beneficial than ICICI from 728 levels. We went all the way up to 735. Absolutely, 1% move came. And I was in a good 2 lakh profit. Why did I go long on Axis? Very, very simple. The same thing that I told you on Nifty Bank, I practiced over here. So we got a good gap up opening. And I told you because markets have fallen the other day, it's going to fall down again, but it, it will take support at the closing price and it should bounce back. Also, considering it was an expiry, I wanted to play out this trade because during expiries, your support and resistance become very, very strong. And generally on expiries, you don't get a breakout. I think if you track the expiries of the last two, three months, you will see that most of breakouts fail on expiries. So I wanted to take that trade and things are going fine, but something happened over here bond yields and that has been pissing me off for a long long time a lot of people tell me interest rates are going up bond yields are going up and that is going to you know uh, give a lot of pressure to indian markets i do understand i do understand when the bond yields are going higher all the emerging markets will come under pressure right now it's up about 5.6 percent the 10-year note yields um, it's at a good level it's at a good high uh, we just got a good gap up opening today. It's about 1.73. So to, to answer your question, I do understand increasing bond yields is a, is a threat to the emerging markets. But also at the same time, I do understand that the Fed is aware about that. That the Fed is aware about that. And I do not also understand that the Fed will not let the 1930s crisis repeat. I also understand that the Fed will not let the 2008 2013 crisis repeat i think fed fed also has these points in mind much more than you know people like us who are trying to predict the market you know give a reasoning so i think as a, as a apex in what they are doing the fed is aware of all of these things so i hope the bond yields do stay into control because you know we as investors need to be hopeful and uh, you know markets falling down is a good thing to make money but eventually when the markets are falling down we are betting on negative things which is like unemployment poverty etc and uh, you know it's always something sad to make money out of someone else's misery but uh, this was the news that came out to be honest this was the news that came out and things crashed the the interesting thing that happened was uh, today we had a meetup uh, we had a good a meeting with our architect program clients in Mumbai. So we were at Starbucks and I think around 12, 12.30, things were doing very okay. I was in a good 2 lakh profit when we bought the ICICI. And I'm very, very happy that a lot of you booked profits in ICICI, booked profits in Axis, booked profit in calls and Sun Pharma puts. And hats off to you guys. I, I was at that point of time, you know, interacting with the people, getting coffee. And I was off the screen for a couple and when this fall happened, now, now I'll tell you what went on in my mind. I'll show you the Axis trade because I was very active in this trade personally because Axis had taken a good support at the opening price. This was the price. So when, when basically Axis, I, I bought Axis here and when Axis and all came down over here, I, I started averaging my quantity. Same was with ICICI. I never did I know that this was going to be so severe. And it wasn't expected, but huge falls came. It happened. Uh, we have to accept it. I'm, I believe, I'm assuming, a, loss, a lot of you will be in a loss today because you know you were expecting markets to go higher and they haven't gone higher. I don't think any other news is around the clock. I am not aware of anything else. Everything else seems positive to me as of now. But uh, you know, this is what it is. But uh, just want to tell you something, guys. Uh, I have also done a loss today. What you have to do is, I'm assuming people will be 15-20k losses today. What I'm trying to explain is that we will come back stronger. Number one. Number two, yes, you will be disheartened today. As a captain of the ship, I have given you an advice. 
and that's why i always say guys please use your own risk rewards so for example lots of people have sent us screenshots i'll upload them after this video on our instagram people who were very successful on axis icici trade but people like me i was in the trade longer one mistake i made was i did not observe my stop losses i gave you a stop loss number but myself never acted on it because i was too busy doing something else so i overlooked some things number one be uh, you know accept your loss accept your defeat that is number one please do not blame it on someone else do not blame it on the market yes markets were unnatural they were very irresponsible in the actions that they did today totally understand that but the fault is mine i will accept responsibility for it that's a simple thing so if you made a loss who is responsible it's you because we took that trade and we were wrong number 1 number 2 i don't want you to trade tomorrow it's very important so i will personally be not trading tomorrow the reason is that whenever we take a big loss or whenever we take a big profit any of these two try to avoid trading on the next day why because the next day when you come to the market you will be emotional to recover that loss and because today markets have moved 1000 points the day before yesterday markets have moved 1000 points it does not mean again on friday it will move 1000 point it's very highly unlikely because markets have already moved a lot in the last couple of days and it's probable that now it could cool off it could give you a doji candle sideways market candle because markets have really given money to option buyers now maybe is the time for option sellers i hope you try to get what i'm trying to say so always after a big loss try to avoid the day also because you need to analytically analyze the market you need to be objective towards the market why exactly did we did a loss so today when i sit in the evenings i will always look at the markets and see what i have gone wrong at so just to wind up all these points let's not trade tomorrow let's take these three days off fridays or friday let's take a holiday observe markets analytically and saturday sunday is already enough and uh, let's see what the global markets want to do because in the second half of this presentation i'm going to give you some important points i which i hope should help you in the coming days so again once once again uh, i'm extremely sorry for what really happened today if you did a loss because of me i'm extremely sorry and i hope like the last week that i've given you in green i hope that this loss has not exceeded the profits that i've given you even if i have it's my it's my responsibility and promise as your mentor as your guide to help you get back on your feet so before we get started guys uh, you know let me know in the comments what happened with you what you did what trades you took what are you how are you feeling right now if you need someone to talk to you all have my numbers give me a call i'll be available for chit chat and i can always uh, i'll always hear you out as a response that's my responsibility let's move forward talk about some very very important things a one thing i am not able to understand what is that and and, and please uh, and you are all open to your comments i always read comments and whether it's negative positive i all take it all positively because everyone has their own uh, viewpoint and eventually someone or the other will always be wrong someone will always be right so please let me know in the comments what your view for the markets are now one thing that i don't understand is the divergence that i am seeing in the indian markets and in all of the global markets i don't understand that and i have racked my mind about it i have i have itched my brains about it but something i don't understand what do i mean by that let me open money control so that i can show you how, what the global markets are doing you know i want to show you asian markets i want to show you american markets european markets and then come to the indian markets let's be very frank about it let's be very open about it and go in a systematic way a lot of people ask me should we go short here think about it do you want to go short here because right now already bank nifty's fallen 6 5000 points from the highs nifty's fallen 1000 points odd numbers from the highs don't you think you are at somewhat of the bottom because we always short at top and buy at the bottom also remember one more thing guys right now things are not looking good for me i read a loss you might not like what i say but always remember what warren buffett say said he, he says that whenever people are fearful this is the time for you to become greedy and whenever people are greedy this is the time for you to become fearful i'll cover all these points when i give you the idea that i am trying to encompass so let's open the global markets nifty down 1 1.11% 
Sensex down good 500 points. Nifty Bank down 1000 points uh, from the highs. Uh, let me open all the global markets. Uh, what are the other? Uh, yeah, let me open all the other global markets. Let's see how the global markets have done in the morning. Let me start off with Asia. SGX Nifty right now at 571, couple odd points higher than uh, our closing, right? So that that does not really matter. But uh, if you look at Japan, 1% higher. And Japan closes during the Indian markets. Japan was 1% higher. Singapore was 1% higher. Hong Kong was 1% higher, more than that. Taiwan, 0.50% higher. South Korea, 0.61% higher. SET, higher. Jakarta, up. China, up. What the hell happened with Nifty? And this is something I was stoked about. So when I gave you all to buy calls, I was in line with the global markets. You know, I, I, I saw the global markets. Things were looking fine to me. I saw my levels. Bank Nifty was taking support. And I was in that view. And I don't understand why only India has fallen today and why none of the Asian markets have fallen. Even the, even the uh, yeah, Asian and you know, the, the Oce Oceania region markets have fallen. I don't understand that. Number two. Germany higher 1.3%, France higher 0.30%, UK higher 0.39%. What the hell is happening in India? And I think this is one divergence I have seen in global markets. And I haven't actually seen global markets. Because whenever India falls, maybe America falls, or maybe if America is at highs, some other market falls. But right now, it's on your screen, guys. Again. I'm not giving you an idea that I'm not propagating an idea. Eventually, I'm going to do what I like and you're going to do what you like. You are at my channel because you like the views that I give you. You like the information that I share. So what is happening right now is that all the other markets are up and only the Indian markets are down. And not only down by point, like 100 points. They were down 400 points, I think, from the highs. Bank Nifty down 1,000 points from the highs. What the hell happened? If bond yields were such an issue, why hasn't other markets reacted? Let's look at America. Let's for a bit look at America. Dow Jones again at lifetime highs. I'm, I'm going to take a pause because I want to pause here. Dow Jones is again at lifetime highs. So when I said after the Fed meeting, markets go, high, markets go high, I was not wrong. So if you think I was wrong, I was not wrong because all the other markets in the world are going up higher. If you look at the S&P, if you look at the S&P, it is building up at resistance, about to break out again. It's got a lot of room left. It's at 60 value. It can, it can go out. I think on the Dow, we, we are around about to get overbought. But that is still fine. But Dow is good 200 points up higher today also. S&P is higher. Yes, NASDAQ is lower, which keeps S&P lower. All of you know that from my analysis every day. So yes, IT is taking a, is taking a, is taking a beating. The, the small cap 2000, Russell, is still up. It is also at the highs. You haven't seen a fall here. The VIX is fine. It's at 19.7 levels. No big deals. It's, it's, it's kind of like broken down the support. So, what's really happening? UK markets, if I show you the charts in America, UK, UK is just about to break out. You can see the buildup happening over here. It's just about to break out. So, any closing in UK above 6800 is a breakout. So, you know, when I was analyzing the markets, this came on to my mind. So, eventually, guys, you know, you can always keep on ranting. But uh, this, is, this, is all, this is all what I think. And uh, I will not always be right because somewhere or the other, I will always miss some information. And this is the problem of being a trader. Something or the other will always be missed. But I hope that you like the videos that I do. And I hope... You accept my apology for getting you on the wrong side of the trade. So I'm again, once again, very sorry about that. Right, let's talk about the Indian markets now. Some points I want to discuss, which are I feel are important. First of all, opening the charts of Nifty. Uh, I think before we talk about Nifty, let's talk about the data. I haven't, I haven't really talked about the data for a long, long time now. The data is out. So on the expiries, uh, please remember one thing, guys. Uh, on expiries, all of you are aware if you are in the market for a while, the movements that are happen are not logical. Also, the data that comes out on expiries is not logical 
do not really rely on it. So especially the call and put data, because a lot of adjustments take place. You could rely on the futures data, but not really on the call put data. That is what I feel personally. And any movements that happen on expiries could be illogical. So for example, if a movement has happened on the downside or it happened on the upside, for example, it could be very illogical. You all can see the data. I don't have to backtest because I have done my research already. But let's look at the data. Let's, let's see the readings that have come in. Index futures. Okay, let's start with that. Clients, what have they done? Clients have reduced 26,000 contracts. They have reduced. If clients are reducing exposure in longs in index future, that means that they are bearish. So this is a good sign for the bulls or the FIIs, meaning FIIs have been bullish. So FIIs finally, after a long time, have done some buying. Yes, the buying has, is not a lot. It's just a 3,000 contract buying. But yes, thank God, FIIs have finally bought something. In the cash segment, yes, they have been biased for the last two, three days. Let me tell you one very important observation. All of you who have been with me for the last one year and two years, you know this very well. You must be remembering this from the 21 December crash video also. As long as this figure over here that you are seeing, the index future client is in green. As long as clients are net long on the index futures, you will always get some kind of selling on the higher levels. Simple logic, if clients are long, someone has to sell, FIIs will sell somewhere or the other at top. So if you want to be aggressive bull, forget the market, the moment this will become red, you can become aggressive bull. You can go back on my videos for a couple of days and you will see I told you that whenever this figure becomes green, you will see selling. So the entire March, this figure has been in green. So we have always been seeing selling on the higher levels. Entire November, December, this figure has been in red. That's why we've been seeing a bull run throughout this entire one year. So if you are a bull, you need to see this figure in red. Okay, let's look at the call data. Clients today have really reduced calls from 1.58 lakh. They've gone down to 30,000. 30, that's a good 1.20 lakh reduction in calls. Again, a good sign for the bulls that uh, clients are becoming less and less bullish. This could be uh, some kind of a bottom being formed on the market. Again, it's my uh, interpretation of the data. I could be wrong, but this is how I will trade in the coming days. I'm very transparent about whatever I do. If I make a loss, I accept it. I'm not ashamed because I'm human. If I make a profit, I'm proud of it. It's going to be on the screens, but I will never hide something from you because I consider everyone watching my video my extended family. Let's look at the puts. Clients have reduced put shots. So if you are short on the puts, means that you are bullish. If you are reducing this, you are becoming bearish. If clients are becoming bearish, yes, FIIs are becoming bullish. So even FIIs from roughly 2 lakh puts, now they are at 1.7 lakh puts. So this is a good sign again for the bulls. FIIs have done some buying today. That's a very good thing. Finally, today, this is another very good thing. I always tell you, observe stock future data. FIIs have finally bought stock futures. They were selling stock futures continuously. And I think for a good stable bull market, some, some, some sorry, kind of rally to come, this figure should go above 1 lakh. The moment that happens, that could be a good signal for us buyers. So let's, let's see what happens in the coming days. But this is one thing uh, which you need to keep a track on. Okay. So overall, overall, I'm, I'm seeing some, some positiveness, you know, coming in finally after so many days of selling. FIIs are continuing to buy in cash. That's another positive signal. Uh, and which is looking good to me. It is looking good to me. So if you are a very big bull, let's just see what happens to this figure. I also want the FII index future figure to finally go up. Let's hope it goes up to 40, 50 K in, in the matter of a couple of days. And accordingly, we can see. So if I do the data reading, this tells me that tomorrow, some kind of positive momentum should come. Whether it sustains or not, that, that we will discuss later. But the data suggests that some kind of buying has been done and it, it, should, it should rise up. Also, also I, I feel that today a lot of puts have been, profits have been booked in the puts. And this is my observation today, you know, the markets have fallen. 
in the last couple of days a lot. So I think the FIIs will start to book their profits in the shots that they are holding. So uh, let, let's see how, how that plays in the coming days. Now, uh, now that's the overview that I have from the, from the data. Now, now what, do, what do we expect in the markets? I'm going to give you a very technical understanding of it. If you are an investor, if you have been working with any, any company, let's say if you work with one of the big banks, if you work with the big brokers, uh, you will not be new to this concept. But if you are an investor, right, please, please take this with a pinch of salt. If you are an investor, you always look for dips to buy. If I'm, if I'm going to tell you a question, what are we right in right now? We are in a bull run. Everyone is aware of that. We are in a bull run. There is no doubt to it. And yes, I've already told you whenever you get aggressive sell-offs in a bull run, we should look for opportunities to buy. Do I need to tell you what happened over here? Do I need to tell you what happened over here? Markets fell down. People became bearish. Huge rises. Markets fell down. Huge rises. 21 December. Huge rise. Here. Huge rise. What I'm trying to say is whenever the markets have fallen down in the past couple of days, huge movements on the upside have come. Right? We are not new to that. So another thing is whenever these sharp falls, always in a bull market, you have to understand sharp falls will come. And that is nothing new. Whenever we are in a bull market, we get sharp falls and they should be bought into. That is what the technical world says. And if you are an investor, if you are an investor and you are looking right now, portfolios will be bleeding. When I say bleeding, you will be down by a good 10, 15% because we have come down. Nifty has come down 10, uh, about 7, 8%. So if you're holding mid caps, small caps, any of the banks, your portfolio will be definitely hit. But if you are an investor, you always look for opportunities of 10% declines, any stock. And right now, I think, Majority of the big banks, majority of the big stocks like Reliance have already fallen down 10 to 15 percent. So you should consult your advisors, and maybe this could be a time where you should start to maybe buy in small quantity. And if further decline comes, you should try to average it out. That's what I said yesterday, and I'm going to repeat it. See, I'm not saying markets will rebound like anything tomorrow. I'm not saying that you've got to fall today. Maybe if you want to rebound, it takes a couple of days, right? Everyone, everyone is aware of that. But if I think, you know, these are the times when everyone is fearful. It is time when people should become greedy. The COVID crash, everyone remembers, everyone regrets. No one entered. No one entered. And we all enter when we are at highs. So all these dips, I feel, should be places where one should start to buy. What will happen is, let's say you buy Reliance at 2000. I'm going to give you a very raw example. Let's say we buy Reliance at 2000. Maybe it goes to 1950 levels. We'll probably average it there. So generally what an investor does it at a 10% fall from a lifetime high, we start to buy. And maybe at a 15, 20% fall further, we start to average it out so that when the, when the rally resumes, we are fine, we are profitable. That's generally what a normal investor does. That's something I will be doing in the coming days. So my, my interest, my uh, attention now is going to be shifted not to intraday trading, but now I'm going to start looking to my portfolio, finding out which are good companies to add, which are good companies to average, which are good companies to exit. That is something you have to do. All companies which have not taken a hit right now means that they are very, very strong. Companies like FSL. All companies have fallen. FSL has stayed strong. All these companies, you can all see ITC because of demerger. I think ITC has been the top gainer in this last couple of shake off. So all these companies which have been strong in this shake-off, they are fundamentally very, very strong. Number two, use this time. Forget intraday for a while. You will make money later. There is huge volatility. March has been excessively difficult to trade. March has been excessively volatile. But use this time to find companies trading at premiums or sorry, or discounts and, and companies have good moats, good fundamentals. Try to get into them. That's one advice I want to give you before I wind up the lecture and forget about it. Another thing I want to say, technical. If you look at the lows, you know, we always say as long as we are in higher, high, higher low formations, we should always be bullish. If I show you the, the bigger lows, you know, we have sustained all. These are the lows I've marked. They have all been higher lows. Correct? We have always got higher lows. So right now, you know, the previous low was somewhere around 14,450 odd numbers. This was the previous low. 
so as long as this law is intact your bull market is still in in force but if you are closing below this that does not mean bull market is over but let's say if after that you start to rise and you make lower highs and then you correct down this would mean that some kind of major distribution is on the cards some kind of major correction is on the cards so your job right now is to understand this i hope things are clear you know this other day uh, i think around start of march you did do a breakdown but eventually it it just went back to all time highs so what you need to do is today something very very extraordinary happened if i show you very very closely exactly at your technical levels you have taken support what i mean by that is this level the budget the next day of the budget exactly at the open price we have taken a support so now this point becomes very very strong if i have to give you an intraday view yes it looks like a good uh, i would say uh, uh, adam and adam double top right it looks like a very very good double top to me and uh, you know this means that if the double top breaks you could get something like this on the downside you have to be open about it don't be rigid in your analysis if i am saying markets will rise don't be rigid you have to be ready even for the flip side so i would say you are good to go as long as this level is sustained on a closing basis you have broken 50 ma the story is gone now but if this level is sustained we are good to go i think this level comes up, if i give you a, a, a level this comes up to around 14470 that's the low on the 2nd feb if this level breaks let's say tomorrow you should get a fall again which could continue all the way even till 14200 but i don't think 14000 will be broken i think there's a lot of open interest here this this is going to be a very very good support for march series so personally i have bought some calls again which calls april end because i am not sure when the markets will bottom Yes I have a theory which might work which might not work it's worked for me in the past given everyone tons of money but it might not work again I said that 20th march which is the equinox could be the bottom of the market that saturday so maybe today could be the bottom maybe tomorrow maybe monday no one knows about it but if it is we will be lucky so you know we don't know when bottom will be so I have accumulated ICICI bank huge huge quantity calls I have done that but in april so I I become safe in that way because eventually i am a bull and i i always feel that when things are bearish when things are very very fearful i tend to become very greedy i might be in a loss for a one, for one two days maybe but if i have the patience i think i can get out of it with a very good profit so we'll see how how that works out in the next couple of days so what you need to see is is this low broken because this would lead to a lower low if this low is broken on a closing basis for intraday if this low is broken you could get a, another 200 point fall also but my level of concern is number 1 fii inflows are there number 2 global markets are at highs number 3 already we have seen straight fall i feel if this level should be broken again it's what i feel i could be wrong but this is what i would like and like to trade if markets really want to break these levels i feel they should halt here for a bit so that my stop loss can be defined and then again we can sell aggressively right now markets are moving in a single shot so i am not able to you know sell in that conviction because we never sell at bottom and we could see huge inflows by the way tomorrow is also if i am not wrong with my data tomorrow is also the ftsc rebalancing which means that roughly about i think 1 billion inflows should be coming into india uh, i think more light will be thrown into this in the live market tomorrow when and and we'll know which companies are going to get in get these inflows but we all remember what happened when the msci inflows happened 2 months ago all of you are aware when the msci inflows happened you saw kotak what happened to kotak pi industries deepak nitrite mid cap small cap up 5 5% so just remember tomorrow is also the ftse rebalancing we could see large inflows coming into the the big names or the good mid cap stock we will are bullish on so i would say uh, i would say uh, hook yourself on the news channels and be aware, be uh, updated with this i'm not uh, at, at at right now i'm not very uh, par with which companies are getting the inflows but one event that you need to keep an eye on number 2 fridays are known for blood baths but they are also known for days on which reversals could happen 
Fridays and Mondays are days when things can reverse or when things can really bleed. So tomorrow could be a potential reverse. So we don't know. We will play by the levels as simple as that. We will play by the levels. All right. So tomorrow, if the lows are broken, you can go for a short. Again, it depends where the market opens. If let's say today market again opens gap up, I will really not want to short again because according to my rules, according to my logic, according to how I've made money the entire two three months of this year, you always if you open gap up, you will again fall. No doubt to it. But you take support over here. So, so to break this level, try to see where you open. If you are opening flattish or a gap down, then this could break. Go short. Then you could go short. So same is the case with Bank Nifty. If I show you the charts of Bank Nifty, very very similar case. You know we have taken support right at these lows, second Feb lows, which is nothing but thirty three thousand five eighty three. Today's low was thirty three thousand eight fifty six. So tomorrow your observation should be: Is this level broken? The level is thirty three thousand exact level, thirty three thousand five eighty three. So you can say thirty three thousand six hundred round. If this level is broken tomorrow, you could expect a fall even till thirty-three thousand round numbers, which then will become important support. Why? Because this would mean that this entire breakout will get retested, and then markets can continue the fall. Because I think at this point of time, extreme, extreme good area to buy. Why? Because this looks like a good retest, and if you get some kind of a bullish candle here, you can go long. Very sorry, with a very very small stop loss on a closing basis. That is obviously, but let us see what happens. So tomorrow in Nifty, if you break second Feb lows, if in Bank Nifty you break second Feb lows, you should get another fall because even RSI right now is at extraordinary support, which is 40 levels on the RSI. I've already told you in a lot of my videos, 40 to 60 is considered to be a sideways market, but if 40 tomorrow is broken, sustained. Then the cycle is completed, which means that 30 level can be touched. And at 30 levels, then market decides: Should I go to 15 or should I reverse back? Couple of points you need to keep in your mind. So it's important where you open on Bank Nifty, which means that if you open flattish, then this will have meaning. Then you could think of aggressive short again. But if you are opening with a gap up, then I will say again: Try to do this. That you can again go short in the morning. Capture a couple of points on the downside, but then this should become support. Then this should become support. So let us see what happens. I will not be trading tomorrow. I am very disciplined. I have done a loss. I don't want to blow up my account. It's important for you also. Don't be emotional. Accept the loss. What you have done. Let's analyze the mistakes that we have done, and so that when we come back, we can we can have a good uh, profitable day. So it's important that guys, please now I would say shift to first April expiry. The reason I'm saying this is we are not sure what should happen. We are not sure what's going to happen. It's so so volatile. So the more time you add to your options, the more safer you are. So I have I have entered I C I C I calls. I could be wrong, but uh, I really like the dates that I I find out. So I, I believe that. Uh, You know, Saturday could be the bottom, or Friday could be, or today could be the bottom. And I've accumulated first April calls, so even so, I'm not going to decay very fast. And if things move my direction, I could make some money out of it. So that's about it, guys. Uh, I'll upload another video in a couple of hours. Uh, I'm going to do some research, find some levels out. So I hope this helped you. And uh, continue following TFA. It means a lot to us. And thank you all for watching and spending time. Bye.